In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to find the linear velocity and rotational velocity of a ring and a disc. And if you let the two go from the top of a ramp, which one is going to get to the bottom first? So the first thing I'm going to focus on is a disc rolling down the ramp without slipping. So we're going to start off by taking a look at the problem through the lens of the conservation of energy. And that means that the energy in the beginning is going to be equal to the energy at the end. So in the beginning, because it has some height off of the ground, we have a gravitational potential energy, which is going to be M times G times H. And when it gets to the very bottom, it loses all of the gravitational potential energy because it is transferred over to a linear velocity and a rotational velocity. So it gives us kinetic energy in two different forms. So translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. Our translational kinetic energy is one half mv squared and our rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. All right, so we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bunch of substitutions and, and cancellations, and then we're gonna see what happens to our values. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is because we're analyzing a disc, we know that the formula for the rotational inertia or the moment of inertia is one half mr squared. So we can go ahead and substitute out the i for one half mr squared. And then for the rotational velocity, omega, um, you can substitute that out and then put V over R. And since the entire quantity is squared, these two are both squared. So that's gonna simplify down a bunch because we have an R squared and R squared that are gonna cancel out. And then we have one half times one half, with, which is one fourth. mv squared. Bring down the one half mv squared that we had originally. And then we have the mgh on the other side still. So the mass is going to drop out. And then because these end up being um, like terms, they can be added up together. So we have two different coefficients, one half plus one fourth equals three fourths. So if you combine those two coefficients, we have three fourths v squared. And that equals G, which is basically 9.8 times the original height of 1.5 or whatever height you're using. And then when you do a little bit of cross multiplication, the four is gonna flip up over here. So it's gonna be four G H, and then the three is gonna get crossed downwards. And that's gonna equal V squared. So we're gonna square root both sides. And then the velocity, the linear velocity is gonna be 4gh divided by 3 and then square root. Um, so basically all you're going to do is you're going to plug in 9.8 for g and then whatever height you have in your particular problem you plug that in and then you're going to get your linear velocity. If you wanted the rotational velocity you can go ahead and just do v over r. So once you get that particular velocity you can plug in r value underneath it, divide the two and then you're going to get your rotational velocity. In this case I would put in 0 0.2 meters. So I'm not going to crank out those numbers because um, I'm sure you're able to plug those numbers in on your own. So if you're looking at that particular situation, like I said, you're just going to plug the numbers right into here and right into here for your linear and rotational velocity. Now taking a look at the ring, it's going to be very similar. Everything is going to look exactly the same, except this substitution is going to be different. So for the ring, I equals MR squared instead of one half MR squared. So if you take a look at this whole setup, this one half would be gone. This would end up being one half. So when you add up these two coefficients, originally it was one half plus one fourth, which is three fourths, but it's one half plus one half. So it would end up just being GH equals V squared. 
and then you square root both sides, and then your velocity is going to be the square root of g times h. And again, that's for your ring. This was for your disk. Okay, so when you plug in 9.8 and your height, you will for sure get a linear velocity that is less than the disk because the coefficient is less. So there's basically an invisible one here. So one times GH, this one is four thirds times GH. So because that coefficient is larger than one, you will definitely have a higher linear velocity and a higher rotational velocity because the rotational velocity is V over R. Both of them have the same R. So if this one has a greater V, it definitely has a greater omega value. So when analyzing these types of problems, um, it will consistently look like this when everything is all said and done, assuming that you're talking about a ring and a disc rolling down a ramp without slipping. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up and solve for those different values. Thank you for watching and listening.